In this video, we're going to look at heat transfer in the Carnot cycle. So in the previous video, we looked at the internal energy, summed up all of its contributions over the four steps of the Carnot cycle and showed that it's going to be a state function because uh, all of the contributions once added up give you zero, just like we see with um, our familiar state variables, pressure, temperature, and volume, right? Uh, when you sum up their total contributions throughout the entire cycle, you get a total sum of zero. So let's try this exact same thing with heat as well, right? So if we want to get the total heat, right, we're going to take the exact same approach of adding up the contributions at each step. So we'll have a Q1, a Q2, a Q3, and a Q4. Okay, so if we're trying to calculate Q1, so let's, let's do this for step one. Right, we know that step one is a reversible isothermal expansion, and we know that that means that du for an ideal gas is going to be zero. So if we look at the first law of thermodynamics, du being equal to dq plus dw, right, if du is zero, then that tells us that dq, and I'll put the subscript one for the first step, is going to be equal to negative dw at the first step, right? Now, in this case, we're dealing with an ideal gas expansion. So we're dealing with pressure volume work. So dq1 is just going to be equal to the work. So all we have to do is just uh, plug in our negative PDV. Since there's a, uh, a negative sign already here, that's going to change to a positive, right? So we're going to have PDV. Okay. So now we can integrate to get Q1. So Q1 is just going to be equal to the integral from V1 to V2 of P dV, right? And now we just plug in our ideal gas expression. So we have the integral from V1 to V2 of nRT over V dV. And so we can yank nRT out of this integral since that's all constant, right? It's an isothermal process, so T is constant. So we'll have nRT. And now we're just taking the integral from V1 to V2 of 1 over V dV. And so that's going to give you a Q1 expression of nRT ln V2 over V1. Okay, so that's going to be our expression for Q1, right? So we have Q1, nRT ln V2 over V1. Now, if we go to step two, it's an adiabatic process. So Q2 is going to be equal to zero, right? So we got that one. And if we do a similar process for step three that we did for step one, right? This is another isothermal process, isothermal compression, then we end up with the following expression for Q3. We end up with nRT ln V4 over V3. And then, uh, so that's Q3. Then for Q4, it's another adiabatic process. So that's going to be zero. Okay. So we've got everything we need to sum up and get our total, um, our total heat transfer. So let's do that. And let me actually just go to another slide here. Right, so we're trying to get Q total. That's gonna be equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4. Right, we saw that Q2 and Q4 were both zero since they're adiabatic processes. So this total sum for Q total is just going to be nRT ln V2 over V1. Oh, actually, yeah, let me go back and, and correct something real quick. So in this first expression, right, uh, in step three, this temperature is it's an isothermal process. This temperature should be T prime, right? 
that T should be T prime for this isothermal process. So let's make sure we make that correction here, plus NRT plus NRT prime LN V4 over V3. Okay, so um, is it zero? Well, we, we really don't know. Um, right now we, we kind of can say yes, but we, in order to say anything definitive, we would have to know what's the relationship between V2 and V1 and V4 and V3. Well, luckily, what we can do um, is equate the temperatures and volumes from the adiabatic processes and be able to get a relationship between V2, V1, and V4, and V3, right? So for the, if we take uh, the adiabatic processes, right, we know that we have the following relationship between the temperature and volume. Right, so you'll have T1, it just in general, T1, V1, gamma minus 1 is going to be equal to T2, V2, gamma minus 1. So if you go back to the video that talked about the heat capacity ratios, um, we actually got this expression here uh, for... Uh, the temperature and volume relationship with uh, dealing with the gamma heat capacity ratio. So, uh, so we can use this for each of our adiabatic processes, right? So if we look at step two, right, so let's go back. Step two was a reversible adiabatic expansion, right, going from T to T prime and V2 to V3. So using that, uh, we can say that T V2 gamma minus 1 is going to be equal to T prime V3 gamma minus 1, right? So basically what I'm doing here is I know that it's expanding from V2 to V3, right? So that's my, my initial and final. And then my initial and final temperature are T and T prime. So what we can do here is get a ratio between the temperatures. So we get T over T prime is going to be equal to V3 gamma minus 1 over V2 gamma minus 1. Right, so we get this ratio for uh, T over T prime from step 2. Now for step, if we go to step 4, right, the other adiabatic process, let me use a different color for step four, right? So step four, right? We know that if we go back to step four, right? Step four is a reversible adiabatic compression going from V4 to V1 and going from T prime to T, right? So we can use that uh, to get another ratio here. So T prime, V4, gamma minus 1 is equal to T V1 gamma minus 1 right so this gives you T prime over T V1 gamma minus 1 over V4 gamma minus 1 Right, so we have these two ratios, right? So what this tells us, right? So if you flip this guy, right? You could flip this and this will be T over T prime is equal to V1 over V4 gamma minus one, right? And then this guy is T over T prime right, V3 over V2 raised to the gamma minus one, right? So we have these race, this same exact ratio. We calculated it from two steps, but this is the exact same temperature ratio, right? These temperatures are exactly the same, right? These temperature ratios. So that means that we can set these two equal to each other. So this, uh, this equality, um, and I, sh I should have flipped these, so hold up. This is V4 over v1 right so we can set these two equal to each other 
and uh, and and get um, a relationship between the volumes, right? So if we set these two equal, then we get V4 over V1 is equal to V3 over V2, right? Just setting them equal, and then they're both raised to the same exponent, so these are actually equal, right? When you do a little math here, do a little algebra, you get V3 over V4 is going to be equal to V2 over V1, right? So now that we have this, right, we can go back to our original expression. We know that these two are equal, right? We know that these volume ratios are going to be equal since we equated these temperature ratios from the adiabatic steps, right? So... What does that tell us here, right? V3 over V4 is just the inverse of this guy, right? So we can actually use a natural log property here to rewrite Q total in the following fashion. So we'll have NRT ln V2 over V1. And then if we flip this guy, all we have to do is change the sign by our rules of natural logarithms. So we have NRT prime ln v3 over v4 right so now these are actually being subtracted from one another right so since v v3 over v4 is equal to v2 over v1 we can plug that guy back in here right so that gives us nrt ln V2 over V1 minus NRT prime ln V2 over V1. Okay, so now we actually have everything in like terms since we have this relationship between these ratios, right? So this gives us a better expression to make a more uh, educated, you know, uh, conclusion as far as whether. Uh, this is going to be zero or not, right? So everything's basically the same except for these temperatures, right? So we can say that Q total is not going to be equal to zero. Q total is not equal to zero in this cycle, right? However, let's say we did want to build a state function. This is kind of a, a little bit of a teaser for where we're going in the class next. So let's say we wanted to build a state function based off of this, right? Everything else here is exactly the same except for the temperature. So let's say we took, uh, let's say instead of uh, using Q total, let's say we used a ratio of Q and the temperature, right? So for Q, so let's say we did Q over T, so Q total, over t right now keep in mind our adiabatic steps uh were both zero right so we're only really using the um we're only really using the the heat change from q1 and q2 those were both isothermal processes right so you would really just be adding up q1 over t plus q3 over t prime right I guess to be a little bit more explicit here, me uh, just as a notation preference for me, let's do Q over T total. Yeah, so basically what we're doing is adding up Q over T throughout the entire cycle, right? And the only non-zero contributions are gonna be from Q1 and Q3. So uh, when you do this, right, Q1 was NRT, ln v2 over v1 right put that over temperature plus nrt prime ln v2 over v1 put that guy over t prime right so now what do we get here we get that both of these temperatures cancel out right t primes cancel out as well and then what we're left with is just nr ln v2 over v1 ah and this guy should be negative because i did the uh the natural log flip 
So right there is negative minus nr ln v2 over v1. All right, so with this, you do get zero, right? These guys cancel out. So q over t actually would be a state function. So this is a state function. And like I said, this is just a teaser for where we're going next. So q over t is actually the definition of a new thermodynamic variable called entropy, which we'll talk about more in the next coming videos.